All right, guys, welcome to the video. I am stuck inside today due to uh, very poor winter weather. Uh, so I've decided to uh, do a video idea that I've been working on for quite some time, or it's been in the back of my mind. I've always thought, I'm going to do that, uh, but it was a lot of research to do. And that is going over the various laws uh, surrounding motorized bikes in the United States. Uh, now, obviously, the United States uh, is 50 separate entities or states or even kind of like countries in one bigger country. So the laws are not the same across the board. They are all different and have their own like little twist to it. Uh, however, there are a few generalizations uh, that we can take away that cover most of the states. Uh, so I'm going to go over those and uh, just kind of show you guys this uh, presentation that I've been working on for uh, the better part of the last two days. Uh, so uh, yeah, we, oh, disclaimer before I get rolling here. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. This isn't legal advice, obviously. I'm just some random dude on the internet. If you get pulled over, not my problem. Okay. Um, that being said, the purpose of this presentation uh, I just noticed a lot of people have questions about this in whichever like Facebook group I'm in or video comments I'm looking at. Someone's always wondering what is legal with motorized bikes and what isn't or is more commonly uh, forcing what they think is legal on other people, which isn't necessarily legal in their state or even the other person's state. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there about what's legal. Uh, as well and what isn't. So I'm going to try to, uh, you know, cut down some of those common misconceptions with the information that I've found over the last, you know, five hours of research that I've put into this. Um, and then I also would encourage you guys to look at, uh, you know, the laws in your own area, uh, in your specific city, county, and state that you live in and ride in, uh, so you know and are better informed because, uh, that's what's most important is that you guys find out uh, what's correct for where you live. Um, and then also this is only for internal combustion engine powered bicycles. Uh, this isn't e-bikes. This isn't motorcycles. We're just concerned with uh, people that have put motorized bike engines on their pedal bicycles. So we will go to the next slide. Are motorized bikes even legal? Uh, in short, no. If you just take an out-of-the-box YD100, your regular China Doll kit, or your Phantom 85, or, you know, all those other popular kits that you come across and just throw it on a bike as is, no. It is not legal in any of the 50 states as is. Um, that being said, uh, if you want to make it legal, Basically, that's determined on whether or not you can modify your bike or the kit in such a way that it can be defined as a moped or as a motorcycle. Most of this presentation will be focused around uh, making it a moped, since the requirements are a lot less stringent for that. Um, so, on to the next slide. What is a moped? Well, that varies widely depending on what state uh, you're in. And all 50 states do have laws for mopeds. Um, some of them just consider them motorcycles. Uh, some of them didn't have laws until 2019, <laughs> uh, which I think is insane. I found that out. Wyoming updated their laws in 2019 to include mopeds. Uh, and they basically just adapted what everyone else had or what most had. Um, and what most states had, that is an engine displacement of 50 cc or less. Some states say can't exceed 50 cc or can't be up to 50 cc or has to be 49.98 cc, whatever. No one's going to argue about uh, two tenths of a cc. Uh, so that's the limit on your engine displacement. Your horsepower, 
This is all over the board. Most of them are at two horsepower limit. I don't know how they're going to test the horsepower of your bike. I highly doubt that any state uh, is going to uh, require you to put your bike on a dyno. I'm not sure how that would work exactly. Some states are as low as 1.5 horsepower and other states have no limit at all on horsepower. Um, the other big governing thing surrounding mopeds or motorized bikes or motor driven cycles, depending on what state you're in and how they refer to them, is the top speed. Most have a top speed determined at 30 miles an hour. Uh, it cannot be uh, higher than 20 in some places, and in other places it is 35 that it can't be higher than. Uh, definitely you want to look that up for your specific state. And then, most states, a little over half, require that the moped not have a manually operated clutch or shifter. So you are stuck with a CVT or centrifugal clutch. And then the Federal Safety Highway Act, I don't remember the exact name of it, it came into play in the 1970s. Um, all motorcycles and two wheel vehicles of any type must have a horn and lights that include a headlight and a tail light and a brake light. And the headlight must be on at all times when the bike is running. Uh, so that applies to all mopeds and motorized bikes as well in any of the 50 states since it is a federal law and the federal supersedes state law. Ugh, that was a big slide. This is going to be a really long video. <laughs> so recommendations if you just want an easy 50 state legal uh, kit. Uh, to throw on your bike, I would recommend like your standard uh, 49cc four cycle kit uh, with the centrifugal clutch. Um, I'll switch over to here. Uh, we have an eBay listing of what you would typically see. Uh, this one's right around uh, after sales tax, it's going to be around $300 depending on what state you're in. Oh, that was delicious. <laughs> I'm leaving that one in. Um, you might have to adjust the throttle, uh, put a stop on it or adjust it, uh, the screw setting so that you cannot physically get past a certain speed, or you might have to change the gear ratio so you can't get past a certain speed. However, this will be okay for most states. Um, then let's go on to the next slide. This is the list of every state that does not require an automatic drivetrain. Um, so these you can use a manual clutch or even a shifter, provided you don't exceed the speed limit uh, that is set for mopeds in that state. This is the list of all the states. Go through and see if your state is on there. Um, side note, this also includes states that require motorcycle registration to operate a moped. Uh, so just because you're on this list doesn't mean that you're in a lenient state necessarily. So if you're in one of these states and you can have a clutch uh, that's manually operated with your hand or a shifter that you can shift with your foot, your hand, whatever, um, you, I would recommend the uh, 50cc two-stroke motorized kit. Uh, you should have a little bit more torque uh, with this style kit. Again, you are going to have to adjust the throttle or gear ratio depending on your weight. Uh, in every state, the uh, speed is determined on a level surface and at the max capability of that uh, bike with the rider. So. Uh, if you weigh 200 pounds and that kit doesn't exceed 30 miles an hour, you're fine. If you weigh lighter, like me, you're around 140 and then you get 35 miles an hour, you have to change your gear ratio or your throttle to account for that. Or play the game of never opening the throttle past that point, uh, just in case. Um, depends on the state. On to the next slide. 
Now this I have seen way too much and is a huge misconception, uh, probably because the law is all over the place depending on which state you're in. Question is, do you need pedals to legally be a moped? You would think so since the word itself is motor and pedal together. However, no. In many states it can be either or, or is neither specified, or says that you can't have pedals. In the case of, I think it was Delaware, that's on a future slide. Um, but here is the list of all the states that say, yes, you do need pedals to be a moped. And those pedals must be functional and be able to propel the bike under human power without assistance from the motor. On to the next slide. Do you need a license to ride a moped? In almost every single state, yes, you need a driver's license to ride a moped, a regular driver's license that you would use for driving a car. Um, but it does depend on the state. Very few say that you don't need a license. Um, some allow younger drivers to get a moped specific license um, that they can ride around if they're not yet 18 or 16 or whatever the driver's license age is in your state. And then a few states are very strict and they say, nope, all the way to the motorcycle endorsement on your license in order to operate any two-wheeled vehicle. So let's go through those states. No license required states. Um, Arizona, you are in the free. You have no requirement for having a license to operate a moped. Uh, same with North Carolina. That is also one of the more lenient states. And Virginia, for some reason, which supposedly isn't very lenient, but they have a lot of laws surrounding mopeds, and they say you do not need a license, with the caveat that you aren't currently restricted from driving any motorized vehicle due to a DUI. Um, I think that's probably a law that goes for all 50 states, I would imagine, but some idiot obviously took it to court and lost and that's why they had to make that law in Virginia that says if you have a DUI you cannot drive a moped because it is still a motorized vehicle. All right slide number 12 here we go these are the states that allow a special permit for mopeds or in the case of Georgia just any driver's permit uh, as long as you are under the age of 18, you can do this in most of them. Some of them, it's under the age of 16. I think in one, it's 19 and one twenty one. I don't remember all of them exactly, but these are the states where you can get a moped license or permit to operate a moped and don't necessarily have to have a driver's license. But in all of these states, a driver's license does supersede this, so you do not need a motorcycle or a moped license. This is more for teens. Uh, next slide. Here's the list of states that say you can have no fun and to go home. Alabama, California, Idaho, and Mississippi. They all say you need a Class M motorcycle endorsement. Uh, California has different levels of Class M. Um, but yeah, basically you have to take, in most of these cases, a written test and a riding test on two wheels and get your full motorcycle license to ride a moped or any two-wheeled vehicle. Um, next slide here, safety gear. Um, quite a few states require the use of eye protection if you're riding a moped, uh, but they don't necessarily require a helmet, but most of them do if you're under 18, in the, except in the case of South Carolina if you're under 21 you need a helmet. So that's a lot of exceptions, but you should be using helmet, obviously. And it has to be DOT approved or Snell approved. It has to be a motorcycle helmet. It cannot be a bicycle helmet. Um, and then of course, the states that require all riders, regardless of age to wear helmets uh, on motorcycles also have that same rule for mopeds. So California, you need a motorcycle helmet, regardless of your age. Uh, on to number 15, operation of a motorized bike. This has a lot of misconceptions as well. 
I've seen this in forum posts and comments too. Where can you ride your motorized bike on the street? Well, uh, in most states, in nearly all of them, you can't ride on footpaths, sidewalks, bike lanes, or bike paths, despite it being a bicycle, because you now have a motor and it's a motorized vehicle. However, there are a few states, I believe Oregon is one of them, or Oregon, um, and that is that you can ride on a bike path if you have the engine off and you are pedaling. Double check that, though, if you live in Oregon, because I'm just doing that one off the top of my head. Um, there's like four or five others that allow that too, but you have to be pedaling and the engine has to be off. Otherwise, you are restricted to the same streets and roads as cars. However, you cannot ride on highways, freeways, turnpikes, or interstate highways in pretty much any of the 50 states. Um, and there are also several states that state that you can't ride on roads that have a minimum speed limit that is less than whatever the speed limit is for that bike, whether it's 25, 30, or 35 miles an hour. So keep that in mind. These are street legal, mopeds being street legal, only for primarily city uh, riding or in-town riding or roads that like a county road, but not a highway um, in most states. So Pretty much if you're going highway speeds, you can't be riding a non-highway speed vehicle on that highway for your own safety. Um, and then also, uh, in most states, they require that you stay to the rightmost side of the lane to allow other traffic to pass, uh, because you're obviously going to be going slower than other traffic. On to the next slide. Now this is where it's going to get hairy, guys, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm going to have to be. Um, one moment. Do you need insurance on your motorized bike? This is the hellhole that no one wants to talk about and no one wants to look into. And I did. And guess what? It's a huge bummer. Um, this, of course, varies from state to state because everything does. Why wouldn't it? Generally speaking, though, yes with a few exceptions, you do need to have insurance or basic liability on any motorized vehicle, regardless of if it's a moped. Um, however, there are a few states that specifically say you don't, North Carolina being one of them. They are pretty much the most motorized bike friendly state. Um, Many, many, many states do not explicitly say that insurance is required, but it is implied and likely falls under the all motorized vehicles rule. Um, if you want to play that game and chance it, that's up to you. I recommend that you look up the laws on your own for your specific state. On to the next big bummer. <laughs> registration and titling, which is different depending on the states. Registration and titling in my state is the same thing, but not in all states. There are different levels. Generally speaking, registration is less effort than titling. Um, however, that being said, most states do require that your moped is registered and titled. Um, like I said, there are a few that say you don't need to title. It can just be registered, uh, but most are both. This is the most difficult hurdle because registration in many states requires inspection, a manu manufacturer certificate of origin, which you're not going to have because you bought a kit and put it on a bicycle, a bill of sale, which you're not going to have because you didn't buy it from a like legitimate dealership, and a 17-digit VIN, which you're not going to have because your bicycle isn't a motorized vehicle. Or it wasn't when you bought it. <laughs> um, there are some cases where a bike's serial number can be used as a substitute for the VIN, but not all. It really depends on the state, and that's something you'll want to look into if you're concerned about it. However, on the states that do require a VIN on their form for registration, you do uh, you may be able to get around that by getting a pre-VIN year bike because VINs didn't come out until the year 1980, the standardized 17-digit VIN anyway. 
and you might be able to skate into some sort of like classic vehicle grandfathered in law, but it, it's going to be difficult. Um, and then once again, many states do not explicitly say that registration is required for a moped, but in most cases, it's going to fall under the registration requirement for all motorized vehicles. There are a few exceptions to those. Um, North Carolina, once again, Montana, surprisingly, and Arizona uh, specifically say titling and registration is not required for a moped. All right, on to the next slide. So this is where we get from theory to practice, and that is with law enforcement. Uh, now, obviously, laws aren't any good if law enforcement doesn't enforce them, and that may be the case in many areas. They just don't know what motorized bikes are, or they just don't care, and they don't issue citations. However, you are playing an iffy game, and if you get on the bad side uh, of someone, they're having a bad day, they can make an example out of you in most cases. Because um, many states have an addendum to their moped laws that just straight up say officers can make citations if they feel your bike is unsafe in any way or isn't roadworthy or whatever, regardless of whether or not it meets the law uh, or the minimum requirements for that state. Also, there are many major cities and boroughs and suburbs that have specific stricter moped laws than the state that they're located in. So, generally speaking, you're better off in rural areas. However, if you live in a city, you're going to want to look up your specific uh, laws for your area because uh, a lot of times they don't make laws for these types of things until there's enough people causing problems to have to make a law. So if you're in, you know, like Long Beach, they probably, I don't, I don't know specifically about them. What was a specific one? I think it was a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Specifically, they have a law that is more strict than the rest of the state. Uh, and that's because there's more traffic and then more traffic incidents. So it's going to be more of a problem and they're going to focus on that. Uh, but once again, it really depends on the law enforcement in your area. If the sheriff or the cop or, you know, police or whatever you have in your area, if they specifically don't mind and you're, you know, being courteous on the road and you have your lights and whatnot, um, you might not, you know, be even bothered regardless of having a manual clutch or, you know, exceeding 30 miles an hour or whatever. But for the sake of this presentation, those are the laws, um, or at least what I found out. Um, so some fun facts that I found when I was researching this. I'm going to get a drink of water quick here. There's some really stupid laws out there, and these are always entertaining. So in Delaware, a, a um, moped specifically cannot be a pedal bike. However, if you remove the pedals from your pedal bike, it is no longer a pedal bike and therefore becomes a moped, which makes no sense. <laughs> um, also, uh, Wisconsin, you can have up to 130 cc's, but only if your bike has functional pedals. Otherwise, you're limited to 50 cc's and an automatic transmission. Okay. <laughs> um, Kansas allows up to 130 cc's, but has a three and a half horsepower limitation. So you could have a fat moto with a 79cc and be perfectly legal in Kansas, provided that it's geared properly. Um, in West Virginia, you have to have mirrors. I would suspect that that's an unwritten law, essentially, in all 50 states. Um, best be on the safe side to just mimic what you see on a regular moped. Uh, you know, mirrors, lights, horns, blinkers, that kind of thing. Uh, and this is the best one. <laughs> Iowa, they're basically shaming you for riding a moped. You have to have a five foot or taller safety flag in a high-vis day glow color attached to the rear of the bike that is 30 square inches. That's three by 10 or six by five inches. Like that's, that's relatively big. And it has to be, I think it was a triangular shape, basically like the stupid stuff that you would see on dune buggies. You have to have that on the road at all times on your bike, just waving in the wind saying, hey, look, I'm an idiot. I have a moped. 
Like, why? <laughs> if you already have functional lights, who cares? I don't know. That's Iowa's law. <laughs> uh, I got a kick out of that. Uh, if you guys get a kick out of this video, if you thought it was interesting, uh, remember to like the video, give us a thumbs up, share it with a friend, whatever. We're just having a good time here. Um, I'm going to put sources for all my information that I found on my research in the description. It's going to be huge. If there's a character limit, I'll link to some other web page with the links. Um, but yeah, I I found a lot of information and sometimes there's contradicting information. In that case, you want to go with whatever's uh, from a .gov site uh, that would indicate you're from your, uh, your local legislation. Um, also, uh, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more motorized bike content. And uh, that's pretty much the end of what I got here. Uh, if you guys like this video, I already said that. I'm burned out. I've been researching on the computer for way too long. I'll see you guys next time.